Welcome to that 80s show and Dory, I'm a naughty little boy. That song is not you, from the 1980s. Oh, it is not. And I, I was going to shout at you and you shouted at yourself before I even had a chance. But what's the, I mean, listen, this is our own show. We make our own rules. <laughs> so, <We do. laughs> That's the best part about it. We can do what we want. <laughs> so what is the like criteria if it's not an 80s song? But it's a new song by an iconic 80s artist, one of our favorites. What then? I mean, I think that I think that it's all good then. So if you're listening on the podcast, we played AHA's new single, I'm In. Yes, AHA are still making music. And it's, I want to say it, it's better than ever. It is better than ever. They have, like, I mean, it's, you've, like a lot of people listening to the show, right, are of the age where yeah. we all feel like, you know, this is really the prime of our lives. Like I'm as confident as I've ever been. I know myself in work. I'm as skilled and as crafted as I've ever been. And aha, and a lot of the artists we speak to still creating music. They've perfected the craft. And that is aha. Take a listen to it. I'm in. It's just lovely, Dory. It's just a lovely little song. So it actually gave me a teeny bit of nostalgia, a little bit of like hunting high and low mm, vibes mm. in places. Yeah, I think that they done good. They, I think, you know, like not everybody can make a comeback. No. What, did, did they ever go away? I don't think AHA ever went away no, to come back. No, they didn't. All has been there. Um, I had AHA vibes this week. Obviously, uh, pre-pandemic last concert we go to was the AHA concert in South Africa was in a beautiful yep. park setting you went to a similar concert this week was it the same location or just a similar setting um no not the same location down the road kind of similar setting kind of similar yeah yeah down the road basically kind of similar setting this was um I mean similar I suppose you know it was just it was just a very different thing because Paolo, please help me because you were there. I cannot for the life of me remember support bands for the AHA show. Were there any? I don't remember. I don't remember if oh, I watched any. I, I might have got there too late. I should know. So what I'm chatting to Dory about is she went to a Johnny Clegg tribute concert this week. <laughs> and um, just yes. seeing the pictures and everything reminded me of the AHA concert. But AHA did have an opening act. And I should know better because it was a band that a friend of mine is in. <laughs> Okay, but I can't remember the band. I can't remember the band I'm sure now. I was there in time. I'm sure I was there in time to see. There was probably more than one opening act. And I'm sure I was there early enough. But for the life of me, I couldn't remember who it was. And the big difference between the show I went to on Sunday is we got there at 10 a.m. The concert started at 11, finished at 6. Mm. We literally stayed there. It was a full day event. I miraculously did not get sunburned. It, I have to say my factor 50 sunblock <laughs> did its job, is all I can say. Because it was hot. It's supposed to be the middle of winter here. It was hot, 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 hot on Sunday. Sunday Sunday was very warm in Johannesburg. Con contradict. Zoom forward 72 hours and Dory is doing the show. <laughs> <laughs> under the covers from my electric blanket <laughs> <laughs> literally from my electric blanket i'm so cold today you just never know what you're going to get from <laughs> from a johannesburg winter so you go to the John, you go to the johnny clegg tribute concert of course johnny clegg one of the all-time hall of famous south african music the white zulu they called him and this was celebrating how many was it a celebration uh of his anniversary or was it so, just the concert, right? Not specifically. So what what it is, this concert had been postponed twice before. It was a concert that his his sons were trying to put together just as a tribute mm. because, you know, Johnny, I mean, I, I think it is a certain amount of time since he's been gone. I can't remember exactly. But they were hoping to put this concert on in 2020. Okay. And you know what happened yeah, in 2020. Yeah. So they had to postpone. And then they had to postpone again. So this was like take three. Yeah. But I have to say, OMG. An amazing day. I think everything went off without a hitch. I mean, there might have been things that have had, that went wrong. That I didn't notice. Yeah. It was a fantastic, fantastic event. Lots of um, also featuring people who we have featured on the show here from the 80s. Yes. Avoid. We spoke to Lucien from Avoid. Mm -hmm. He was, um, him and his brother, 
that both came out from the UK to perform. I saw Bright you guys Blue, did not the entire band, but a large amount of Bright Blue got back together to perform. Did you and Barrett get a photo with uh, Evoid? Barrett got photos with everyone. He is a celebrity ho. <laughs> <laughs> He just kept running up to people and saying, I want a photo, I want a photo. And I, of course, had to run after and take the photos because he, he's not hes not a kind of selfie guy. Just just before we um, get in there, just I just, I yeah, just so need – Barrett got a photo. Before we get there, I need a full thing. All right. So you say he's not a selfie guy. Barrett, I mean, this is how true to, to form this guy is. He's still got a little digital camera that he takes his photos with. <laughs> Oh little, yeah, a little red one, a little red oh, yeah. digital camera. He asked, he asked a random person sitting next to us at the concert to take a photo of me and him with the digital camera, and she actually like looked at it. Yeah, like, what is this? <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing how like okay, I can understand a youngster may not know, but you know, digital cameras were so weird because they had just such a short lifespan. It was such a tiny little five year lifespan between old cameras and cell phone cameras quality that. You could have missed them completely. So I think there's a generation of people, even if you were in the age of a digital camera, you're like, I actually never used one because I missed it. I hadn't transitioned from my old camera. And by the time I did, we had phones. It's the most phenomenal thing to watch people with it of all ages. Because they go, I don't like mini discs, kind of like mini discs. They go, I don't get the technology. <laughs> yeah. So I did miss the mini disc technology. I didn't miss the digital camera. I actually had a, a, a few digital cameras in my time. All right. But um, also remember there was those, um, of course, we're going really back far. Before digital cameras, there was the normal camera with the, the spool of film. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. And it was, I remember like when I was young, young, the cameras were quite clunky yes. and the film was those literal like round little things that looked like pull bottles almost. And then they made the Instamatic. Oh, yes. And it was like, whoa, we're in the future now. Yes. And it was a whole different thing. And you used to originally have to put a separate flash on top of the thing. Do you remember? You had to clip the flash the photos. On. The photos are the worst. <laughs> The photos are the worst. My daughter's got this like reissue Fuji, like all cool Gen Z type of Insta. This is goddamn expensive. Like, I mean, to, to take Polaroids. I think Polaroids was the big brand name. I'm like, really? To take Polaroids? But yes. I, mean, I know, but like, wow. <laughs> the cost, we, the amount of money we used to spend on getting photos developed. And you never knew, as we've had this discussion, you never knew if it was going to be any good until you got it developed. No one's got heads. <laughs> oh, but what an amazing concert it was, Paolo. You did miss out. I know you were, you know, you you attended, but you did not join us. Yeah, correct. But I think if there is, a, again, such an event, we are going to drag you kicking and screaming because it was an amazing day. I cried. I cried during oh, weeping really? because Bright Blue sang, but, well, they did weeping, but um, Zolani Mahola, from Fresh, she used to be with Freshly Ground. Mm. She did the singing. Oh, beautiful. It was just beautiful. Nice. It seemed like my perfect combination of a mature, well-behaved crowd, daytime drinking and in bed by seven. It's like that. How it can you? So, <laughs> best no, concert. Absolutely. And it was so funny. It was so funny because the Springbok Nude Girls came on and we were right in the front. We managed, um, thankfully, to some, to a friend of mine because we, we, we had normal access. And then this, uh, this um, I'll call her a friend, colleague person managed to upgrade us to, to Golden Circle. So we were right in front, literally, you know, right up there against the railing. Nice. And Springbok Nude Girls came on and I heard the beginnings of Bubblegum on My Boots, which is traditionally a mosh song. Yeah, yeah. And I even said to Barrett, Barrett, you might want to move out the way because there's definitely going to be a mosh. And he looked at me and laughed and he went, well, these people, look at them, they're old. And he was right. <laughs> Nobody moshed. <laughs> Mo I was like, old people mosh, people kind of just standing there banging their heads in, in, like, in place, <laughs> just standing in place banging their heads. <laughs> mosh today, suffer tomorrow. Only the guy with the, <laughs> the inappropriately old guy wearing a Punisher t-shirt <laughs> was like, I think I may start one. <laughs> oh, it, was, it was a good day. Good times. If you want to see some of the videos, you got to get onto TikTok and look for Celeb Savant. Uh, it is Barrett's kind mm -hmm. of like TikTok video diary of the day. Even him dancing. Way better singer than oh, yeah. I ever thought Barrett would be. And him singing. Wow. And him singing, yes. W way better. I mean, I was like, wow. Like, I thought, okay, Barrett, you're quite a quirky guy. Good singer. Dancing. He blames his dance partner, but I'm like, I don't know. Those are quite ingrained in you. 
<laughs> when I say I broke my leg, I, I got I literally got two left feet. They put my leg on backwards. So um, we're talking mm. about we started off the show with Aha, new song by them. What we're loving doing on the show because it's great for the SEOs. Here's a list of 1980 songs that are on the Billboard 200 chart. But now spot the patterns of where these songs come from and why. So there's no particular order. This is mm-hmm. just the 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 1980 songs in the top 200 chart. Of course, running up that hill. Okay, so that's that's a no-brainer why that's there. Next up, Master of Puppets. Of course, again, Stranger Things phenomenon. Separate mm. Ways by Journey. Again, also used in Stranger Things, which I think was used in the most awesome way. I don't know if you've got that far yet, but... Um, I've finished Stranger Things, but remind me. Ooh, am I gonna... <laughs> oh, okay. Stranger Things spoiler alert. I think it is in the mm. second to last. It's in the second to last episode before the last episode. That's like a feature length movie, right? They yes. when when they walk into the house because now it's like the big face off. They play, but they play like this remix. They, they, they they've changed the version slightly. They kind of like Stranger Things did, of and they're playing uh, okay. separate ways as this kind of finale climax song. You haven't seen it, Dory. You got to you got to go check it out. I mean, I have. I just, it, I don't remember it specifically. That's fantastic. It, it's, 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 I will, uh, it's like Stranger Things, you know, the Stranger Things synth, it's synthed. So you might not instantly know it, but it, but it's there. We're, we're looking at 1980 songs on the Billboard chart, past the Duchy bus. <laughs> of course, yeah. of course that's in there. Well, uh, you, you predicted that would be the next number one. It hasn't happened yet. I don't think. I told you, uh, I predicted Babushka by Kate Bush. That's. We don't rest until Babushka's back. <laughs> um, every breath you take, that's also in Stranger Things, spoiler alert, that also makes an appearance in Stranger Things. Yes. Um, yes, I remember that. I don't know why this one popped in. Everybody wants to rule the world. That's also in the, the Billboard no Top 200. That's there. My worst song, Africa by Toto. I mean, this one. <laughs> so, so I know you hate it. That's in there. Um, I assume Don't Stop Believing will be in there. Because you go, hey, mm. Journey, what are they doing? Oh, he has another song. That's cool. Billy Jean. Billy Jean, Michael Jackson. That's in mm. there. That's top one, top 200. I imagine there's always a Michael Jackson song in every chart, always. Uh, Living on a Prayer by Bon Jovi. That's yeah. also 1980 songs in the top 200. And um, when you're asking me earlier about AHA and you missed the opening act, I didn't miss the opening act, mm-hmm. but I did miss. Take On Me, mm-hmm. which who the hell starts with Take On Me? Not me. I'm ending with Take On Me. Take On Me also, another 1980 song in the Billboard Top 200 song chart. And some of those are in the top 100, running up the hills in the top. I don't think it's number one anymore, but top five, Master of Puppets, still way up there. So, you know, like we say all the time, we predicted it. We've been plugging away at this for years. 1980s is more relevant than ever. Taking over music, taking over TikTok. Another song, not on the charts yet. I haven't seen it yet. Angel Eyes by ABBA, right? We spoke a little bit about this last week and it's come full circle. So yeah. what's happening on TikTok right now with an ABBA song, Angel Eyes, wasn't a massive song for them. There is a, a meme. It's kind of like a nostalgia meme. It's a sped up version of the ABBA song, Angel Eyes. People have been using it. It's what are some of the numbers here? It, the first time they, somebody did it, it got almost a million views. Um, there's loads and loads and loads. You just kind of like look for the song on TikTok. You're going to find loads of videos. It's come full circle because ABBA have done it themselves. <laughs> Bjorn. Bjorn from ABBA has actually now memed himself with his own song, right? So here's one. Okay. We'll put it up on that Eddie Show uh, SA Facebook page. And it's a... Uh, Shot of Bjorn going, those shoes went out of style decades ago. Decades ago, they're never coming back into a whole cut of him wearing the most ridiculous platform shoes <laughs> that only ABBA could wear in the 80s, <laughs> 70s and 80s. So I think we've got to stop the trend now because once the people who are part of the trend take part in the trend, it's got to end. That's what, It's called the David Hasselhoff conjecture point, right? Because David Hasselhoff partakes in his own memes that he actually ruins them. Yes. But going through mm. this whole ABBA thing, it made me realize, Dory, we never went back to revisit something. Uh, the Avatars. Remember that? Yes. Earlier this year, yes. ABBA appear out of nowhere and they say, not out of nowhere, I mean, they didn't go anywhere. Oh, I want to ask you something about an ABBA song, right? 
You know, all ABBA songs are about like lost love and men and falling in love and that. Do you think they're all about the same guy or was Frida just like super, and Frida and Agnita were they just super unlucky in love? But didn't Bjorn write all the songs? He did. But that's what I'm saying. Is it did about- they even write the songs? No, no. Bjorn did everything. Bjorn invented pop music. Yeah. But like, do you think they were just super unlucky in love? Like it was Fernando. It's like, do you think all these songs are about Fernando? I think that the Scandinavian condition is to be sad. And therefore you can only write and sing about sad things. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for resolving that for me. <laughs> so, <laughs> ABBA come out <laughs> beginning of the year and they're like, we're going to, or end of last year, we say we're going to do a concert, but we're not going to be there. Right. Because they're all in their seventies. They don't want to be going around. I think it was Agnita who's super, she, 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 and she doesn't fly. She's super reclusive, doesn't fly. So what they did is they kind of like did motion capture. So they were in Sweden, wore the suit, and then these were projected into an arena in London, okay? They sold yeah, it, yeah. Like, sold out. Sold, absolute sellout. And I was like, I wonder what the reviews were. So I went to go look at some of the reviews. This is from The Guardian, ABBA Voyage, that's the name of the show, a dazzling retro futuristic extravaganza. And we got to know, we're South African kids from the 80s. The word extravaganza, you know, you're seeing tits. Like <laughs> you are seeing boobs. Extravaganzas only happened at Sun City where it was illegal to be, no, nothing was yep. illegal. Nothing was illegal. It was illegal no, to be legal. But there were boobs. There, there were, were boobs. boobs. No boobs here. No CGI boobs anyway. It starts with the visitors, an icy electronic track in which a thought, this is the Guardian again, I'm not gonna be able to read this. <laughs> Authoritarian agents hammer on the door of a fearful dissident. Not the ABBA you expected to come calling in this trailblazing retro futuristic extravaganza of the show. Lead singer Anna Fred Lingstead, it then goes, I need to say that because it then goes, Lingstead's verisimilitude. What the fuck is that? <laughs> what review is this? Oh wow, that's a <laughs> that's a big word. <laughs> uh, but I, I I used to know what it meant, but I haven't used it in so long. I don't know what it means. No one has ever no one has ever heard it. By and large, this is loved. They say you know it's Tron like outfits. The graphics were great. You kind of forget for a second that it's not real people that you're looking at these like projections. People loved it. Loved it from the Guardian. Mm. Uh, another one here from Variety, again calling it an extravaganza, is everything it's cracked up to be and more. Mm. And, and more, right? There's not the pictures. You can't make out what they look like. But I also wonder if you could take a photo of the actual hologram, right? Because it doesn't look like it's like a vampire. Like you can't take a photo of it. Abba Voyage review yeah. from the Evening Standard. Can this be real? I literally could not believe my eyes. Oh, there is a photo here. The avatars are astonishingly real. It's got like the uncanny valley type of look about it. So you can see, because they obviously okay. don't project themselves how they look now. They project themselves how they looked in their heyday. That's oh, well, not bad. you? I no, mean, I would yeah. do so. Yeah, I would. I'd project mm. myself when I had hair. So basically a 13-year-old version of myself. <laughs> it, oh, it does say, when they appeared in huge proportions on the big screens, they had the mildest plasticine quality. Uh, but otherwise they were astonishingly mm -hmm. real. That's ABBA. Weird. ABBA, the avatars. The it's like that episode of Black Mirror. Did you ever watch that episode of Black Mirror with Miley Cyrus? Oh, uh, yes. Which it's Like that. Which is yeah. like creepily, creepily <laughs> pertinent these days. Mm. <laughs> the, mm -hmm. the weirdest Black Mirror I watched, I can't get over it, was the one with the two friends who play online games. And the one guy takes the yeah. avatar of a girl and then they like have a relationship in the game. And then they're like, but they, yes. it's, it's such, it's such a mind, like most of Black Mirror is such a mind fuck that one. I would like a, I'd like a Black Mirror with uh, ABBA. I'd watch it. Plasticine Frieders. Mm. I'd do it. <laughs> <laughs> On that 80s show, of course, we like to go back to the 80s and say, uh, hey, movies. They had movies in the 80s. We all remember them. We all love them. <laughs> we were going to do, Barrett went to go watch uh, the movie Elvis the other day. And he said, well, tenuous link, yeah. Tom Hanks is in it. So come in and review it. But then we kind of like busy, couldn't do it, couldn't come in. We were, we, whatever, we just couldn't get him in. I said, oh, Barrett, we kind of think it's like probably too late to talk about Elvis now. 
which is very ironic because we talk about movies from 35 years yes. ago. <laughs> we can't do one that's like from three <laughs> weeks ago. <laughs> Also, I mean, Elvis never died, so very ironic. Very ironic. Listen, in his eighties heyday, that's when like that's when the conspiracy theories went nuts. He was an alien. He was a ghost. Yeah. Remember all the spottings of Elvis? That was because that but was. That's Elvis. the thing is that now I think I think we have finally reached the time where even if he hadn't died when they said he died and he has been alive mm. all this time, it's unlikely he'd still be alive. I was thinking about that the other day. Hey. I was actually going like, because mm. he'd be way into his 80s now, but mm, he'd be dead now. He'd definitely be dead even if he faked it. Probably. Do you, do you think he faked it? No. No, you think he died? Uh, I, think Michael, mm. I think Michael Jackson faked it. I think Michael Jackson's around. Really? I, I was super disappointed. <laughs> because he was in trouble? Yep, yep. I was super disappointed that at his like memorial service, no one shot him out of a cannon like into space. Like that is Michael Jackson send off deluxe. And I was like, <laughs> Jermaine, you missed. Yeah, you missed I a suppose trick. that sounds on on brand. <laughs> you missed a trick. So what yeah. are we watching this week from the nineteen eighties Palo and Dory video store? Movie Ooh. time. Oh. Movie time, that's what we call it. Oh I I got a treat for you this week. <laughs> or maybe not. Maybe it would just be torture and punishment and not a treat. Oh dear. Also, it's not a movie. It's a TV series. I had forgotten about it completely. And it came back into my brain because uh, my husband actually downloaded it to show to our teenager who loves it, which I'm actually extremely surprised about because it's the weirdest show. It's one of the weirdest shows that ever existed. And yet you are, this is definitely a, you know, a mom art thing. You either love it or you hate it. All right. And it's so so weird, but I, I was like, oh my goodness, I totally forgot about this. And of course it's from the 80s and I'm so doing it on the show. I haven't had a chance to watch every episode, but I've skimmed through and I've watched a couple of episodes again because I watched it originally. There are only 12 episodes in the series. It ran from 1982 to 1984. And they, there were two seasons with six episodes each. I right. am almost positive you would know this, Paolo. It is very British. It is more British, perhaps, mm. than Monty Python. Yet there are many similarities with Monty Python oh, from wait. this series. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay. Oh, I am, oh, there are a lot of options. I don't think we've ever done British. I don't think we've ever done a British series. The one Not I'm thinking think it could be. And I can't be, believe I have forgotten about this one. Really? The one I'm thinking could yes. be more 70s, not 80s, but yeah, let's let's keep going. What are you thinking? No, I, I, I'm being lazy because when you said Monty Python, I was like, is it not the nine o'clock news? But that was not no, pure the 80s. No, 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 no. No, and this is, like I say, only 12 episodes and then that was the end of it. Oh, so I think okay. not the nine o'clock news ran for much longer. Mm, mm. This doesn't have any of the Monty Python people involved. I'll tell you who created this. This series was created by Rick Mayle, Ben Elton, and Lisa Mayer. Oh. Rick Mayle is one of the stars you had of me this at, show. You had me at Ben Elton. <laughs> you had yes. me at Ben Elton. <laughs> indeed. Indeed. I mean, I've read quite a few Ben Elton books, and they are excellent. Outrageous. But I still think this might be the pinnacle of his career. This was an incredibly strange, weird series called The Young Ones. Yes. Oh, my God. It is. Yes. If you have never watched it, it's safe to say you've never properly laughed. Oh, my God. Is that or, fair? Or you're going to watch it and you're going to watch it in horror and not laugh at all because <laughs> it is beyond silly. And it is quite, there's a lot of surrealism in mm. it. There's puppets which is where yes. the similarity kind of comes in with Monty Python, the silliness, the puppets, the surreal, bizarre, weird things that happen. I mean, one of the things that stands out for me from Monty Python is the big fat guy in the restaurant who explodes because yes. he eats too much. Yes. And he explodes after eating a wafer thin mint. And it's that kind of humor. It's very, very similar. There's also that kind of vibe to it. Mm, mm. But, but I mean, it's just, like I say, I'm amazed that my teenager enjoys it because it's 
very retro. Yeah. It's very dated in a good way. It's very British. Yes. They don't watch a lot of British stuff, but <laughs> yet this has been a hit in the household. And, you know, when, when it came back into my brain, all I could remember was an episode called Sick. I don't know if you remember that episode where no. the one house. So basically it's, 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 it's four housemates mm. who are like supposedly students in some college, but it's called like scumbag college. Yeah. It's, like, it's not like a, that's the thing. It's like, it's all weird. So it's like, yeah, they go to scumbag college and they all very different types of personalities. Yeah. In a way it's so realistic because imagine that you and your friends kind of, you know, you're studying your students and you're going to get some accommodation. You're going to share, you're going to share a flat. Yeah, And yeah. it's all those things that happen when people share a flat and they're kind of different personalities and they kind of don't get on with each other. But take that to the extreme of surrealism. <laughs> so, for example, in the first episode, they go to their new place, which is uh, it is like some sort of flat type thing. Yeah, And two of the guys walk into the one room and they both want the room. And they're arguing over who's going to have the room. And the one guy literally sets the bed on fire. And he's like, <laughs> oh, yo, you can have this room because the bed's burning. <laughs> So I want to take, I don't know if you're going to talk about him later. Maybe I'm cutting in friends yet. Can I take a bet that the guy who set the bed on fire, like Dory says, there are four characters, four kind of stereotypical characters, yeah. but this character only made sense in the 80s because this subgenre yes. only really existed in the 80s. Vin Bastard, the punk, did he set the bed on fire? <laughs> V v Vivian Bastard Vivian is exactly Bastard. the one who did That's it. it. Of course, Vivian, Vivian Bastard. Bastard. Yes, <laughs> yes. He, he was this caricature of 1980s punk, but he had the worst mohawk. It was like a Krusty the Clown <coughs> mohawk that came out three sides. <laughs> but he was a counterculture punk. He was like a sociopath. He, like he set beds on fire, sadist. He, he was the best. I loved him. But it's like bizarre. So there's an episode called Bomb and they wake up and all of a sudden, for some unknown reason, there's an atomic bomb in their kitchen. <laughs> it's never explained how it gets there. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it's just, it's. I'm not even going to tell anymore because you guess what? Every single episode's on YouTube. They're short because nice, nice. it's a sitcom. Yeah. Just go watch it. But uh, I do want to just tell you a couple of things about it. So yeah, so uh, we kind of went through the cast, but that, eh, irrelevant. The one thing, <laughs> stupidly, they tried to make an American version. Oh, okay, right. And, I mean, like, you know, mm -mm. so it was a flop. Of course, they made a pilot uh, episode of the American version and it actually featured the guy who played Neil, the hippie guy, in it with some, with some other people. It was a total flop. It wasn't picked up. It's like, this is so British. It does not translate, mm, yeah. you know, into another culture as such. Yeah. But then, I mean, the the legacy of the show it's never it's never really gone away. There's constant references to it. If you go onto the Wikipedia page and you like, I mean, SpongeBob SquarePants had an episode which featured three of the cast members playing chimpanzees. <laughs> now a lot of people watching it wouldn't even like make the connection that this is the guys from the Young Ones. But imagine the ones who do make the connection. But Amazing. The, the Young Ones is one of those shows that if you go through like more Latter-day South Park and The Simpsons and SpongeBob and Rick and Morty. And you like look at the the creators of those shows and who their inspirations were and what they watched. Pretty much all of them, the young ones is on their list. Like it's, it's a show that they loved and they were into and kind of it's inspired them. Um, and I think you always go like classic Monty Python, but you go through and I, I yeah. bet you go look at the creators of SpongeBob and they'll tell you Young Ones was probably one of their favorite shows. Yeah. I've, I've found a meme of the Young Ones on a lovely sounding website called Slapwank. <laughs> oh, lovely. It's Viv Bastard. This calls for a very special blend of psychology and extreme violence, which I mean, that that's <laughs> live your life by that. <laughs> the amount of violence. So actually that that's described that way. It's, um, what did they call it here? Um, something like, yeah, violent slapstick. Yes. Violent slapstick. That's how it's described. Because in every episode, they just destroying the house. Like, just, like I say, in the first episode, they set the bed a lot. And it is just, they're constantly punching through walls and <laughs> destroying the entire place. It's like that, that, the poor people who made that set <laughs> is all I can say. They had to keep rebuilding it, obviously. My, 
Maybe my, that's why there's only 12 episodes. <laughs> maybe they ran out of like a set, set budget. My wife would not do well with that. She couldn't even watch that. There's that thing on Netflix, Man versus B or Man and B with Rowan Atkinson. She cannot, she hates shows where things get destroyed for no reason. It's like, I cannot watch a shit. It's like, she hates it. She's just like, the practicality of her just completely takes over. It's like, how, how will they clean it? That's impractical. How will they ever do it? So, so <laughs> not for her. Great recommendation. <laughs> the young ones uh, will post up that meme mm. from Slapwank. Slapwank.com. <laughs> and it's safe for yeah, work. And, and then there's, safe for work website. Like I say, there is, they're all on YouTube and there's also a 18 minute long video on YouTube called 18 minutes of the young one's insanity. Uh-huh. So if you've never seen it or never heard of it, check that out. If you find that funny, then definitely go watch the episode. Maybe watch that. Maybe because we're all time pressed. Yeah. We're all time pressed. So yeah, I, uh, I've i been going last few weeks, been going through Disney Plus, finding 80s things. This is not paid for by Disney Plus, this segment. This is just us. And why? <laughs> it should be, damn yeah, it. Exactly. Why are we not getting paid by Disney Plus instead of I'm paying them? You know, the way they own everything, they probably own us. Who knows? Maybe we're working for Disney Plus. We just don't know. We just don't know what they own. So I've been going through Disney Plus, finding the stuff. Before I get into my recommendation of this week, uh, we showed my daughter, 11 years old, Golden Girls the other day. We're going through, say, what can we watch? We stumble upon Golden Girls, right? So we kind of get into pilot episodes are always weird. They're kind of establishing. It's a couple of cheap gags, which is kind of Golden Girls. She's like not really that interested. Kind of like finds Betty White a little bit funny until Sophia comes onto the scene. Now, now she's like, <laughs> picture oh, yeah. this, Sicily, oh, 1912. Like <laughs> she loves <laughs> <her> Sophia. <laughs> Um, Sophia was always the favorite when I was younger uh, as well. Absolutely. God, so she like she's like, no, this this lady is too much. Always walk around with a little purse, never puts it down. No matter what she's doing, she's got a little purse. <laughs> what so we're going through it. What reminded me is like, oh my God, that beachside condominium that they live in. What an 80s fucktastic palace is that place? <laughs> Totally. Blanche's bedroom has got like palm leaf motif on the wall. Like it's pink carpets. It is, it re- really, we're talking about sets. That condominium should like have its own name in the credits. That place must have cost a couple of million dollars, even back in the 80s. That place is huge. I think they're in Florida. That place must have cost a damn fortune. Yeah. Uh, what a beautiful place. Yeah. Like, that is 80s deluxe. So they, they, you know, we, we often talk about beautiful 80s places. Golden Girls house. I mean, a huge house on top of it. Huge house on top of it. I don't know if it was beachside. I'm actually not sure. I just can't remember if it was beachside. I don't think no. so. No. So going through Disney Plus, looking for 80 shows to watch. I see something. I, ah, that's a movie. That's an 80s movie. I'll watch that. So I click on it. The eyes aren't so good. The, I kind of see the poster, see the name. Ah, oh, cool. Click on it. Ghost. Ghost, the horror. It's a remake, a modern day remake of an 80s movie. Modern day series. Okay. I'm angry. Shit. Click out of that. Immediately it comes up. If you like this, you may want to watch this. Oh, thank God. It's the original movie. Oh, now I'm relieved. Ooh. Now I'm relieved from 1989. Yes. So we're doing another Tom Hanks movie, right? We've done, okay. last week you did The Man with One Red Shoe. He wasn't well known then. Now's one of Tom Hanks' pre-breakouts because obviously Forrest Gump, Philadelphia, Sleepless in Seattle, or is he, you got mail. Which one is he? Was he both? Did he do both? Uh, yeah. Yeah, he did yeah. both. He did both. It's the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> one with letters, one with email. <laughs> so, this is pre that. You're going to know what movie it is by the next question. Dory, you're more of a cat person, right? I am. Yeah, me too. Me too. My family, dog people. I'm more of a cat person. I I have, and this is not a joke, I have a phobia of the wet parts of dogs. Like their noses. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. The image that has just come to my mind. Oh, my God. I know. <laughs> noses, mouths, eyes. It, it freaks me out. I, I, I'm, I'm scared of it. I'm scared of it. And like, that's what dogs are. They always want to put those on you. I'm like, oh, like, and people think, oh, you don't like dogs. I'm like, I, I like, like, they're wet. Can we not have this wetness on? Like, I'm, I'm afraid of it. They're wet and they, 
and they want to put their wetness all over you with their paws that are often muddy, yeah. which also, which is also wet. It's, it's constantly, so, yeah. constantly. Yeah. So like you and I are both yeah. cat people, not those cat people, not from your movie cat people. We're not those. No, not <laughs> from a few weeks ago. We're not those cat people. No, no. Okay. No. Not those. So dogs wet parts. So in this movie, the first time you meet the dog in this movie, maybe not the first time, but the first like major scene you remember of it, this dog comes running and his mouth is flapping back and all the slobber is flying and there's so much wet dog parts being exposed. I know exactly what movie it is. All of them. All of them. That guy. It was... Turner and Hooch. Turner, Turner and Hooch. Hooch. Turner and Hooch. A different <laughs> take on buddy cop Turner. movies. I remember seeing Turner and Hooch on the big screen and that scene oh. with the dog... And the slobbering oh, no. was hilarious. Hilarious. Oh, no, I, I w- I've never forgotten it. Oh, how could you have watched that on the big screen? Oh, it was I funny. Did. Did. <laughs> it was the eighties. We went to movies all the time. That was the movie. <clears throat> oh, because that's because then, then Tom Cruise. Cause, I mean, Tom Tom Hanks is walking with a muffin to now make friends with the dog. And the dog jumps on him and just like holds yes. him down by the neck till the owner comes away. He says, he barely broke skin. Don't even worry about it. So the movie is- And then there's another scene where like, yeah, they're like in the car together. Yes. And the dog's oh. just slobbering and he makes some funny comment. It was so funny. It's not just slobbering. He leaves the dog and the dog eats the car. He eats the car, Dory. Yes. Okay. Yes. I mean, like, <laughs> so the movie's turn in hooch. It's a buddy cop movie, except with another like angry, disgruntled, older cop. It's a dog. So the the owner of the dog gets killed. The dog's the only witness. <laughs> now they, the dog helps him solve the crime, right? Um, the dog is destructive yep. as shit. He is, it's what's, it's called a douche. Uh, what's the name of the, the breed of the dog? Uh, a, the breed of Hooch is a douche de Bordeaux, a French Mastiff. Huge, monstrous dog, like just the biggest, right? It's like a French bulldog. But, it's like a French bulldog, right? Very similar. But like on steroids. And so yeah. many, so, I mean, and his wet parts are big and wet. And like, <laughs> <laughs> I, now Tom Hanks in this is like me, very neat. Everything's got its place. Everything's clean, right? The dog, no, this, is, this dog was a junkyard dog. He grew up in a junkyard. Okay. So he doesn't, this is not the way he operates and he destroys everything. I don't find that funny. Marley and me, not funny. I don't find from Beethoven, I don't find it funny when dogs destroy yeah. people's houses. It's not humor to me. <laughs> it makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> okay, I don't like it. So this movie was hard for me to watch. Lots of dog wet parts, mm. lots of dog destroying stuff. Prime Tom Hanks. Now, it did quite well. Popular movie, people still talk about it. It's on Disney Plus right now. Tom Hanks feels, you may, now Dory's seen it, people who've seen it remember, very traumatic. Tom Hanks feels, because of the way it ended, that's why it's not more popular. He feels if the ending was different, this would be one of the all-time great dog movies. But because of the way it ended- I don't remember the ending. Are, oh. we, are, we, are we gonna give a spoiler? I don't remember it. Should we, okay. Don't tell me the dog dies. Does the dog die? So think about a world where you now go, you're a family. What movie should you watch? Oh, Tom Hanks, oh, he's, he's lovable. Love him, saw him in the burbs, love him. Tom Hanks, boy next door. This is the best. Look, I kissed a mermaid. Tom Hanks loved a dog. Who doesn't love a dog? Best movie, family, children. Let's go watch this movie. Oh, the dog's running. The dog's this. The dog's, oh shit. My children aren't oh. sleeping tonight. <laughs> oh no. I'm not laughing at Oh no. <laughs> That's what happens. But he's a hero. He's a hero. He's a hero at the end of the day. <laughs> Tom Hanks. But just wrong. Just like, no, that should not have happened. So because in the remake, did they change it? I, I haven't watched it. So- now you can imagine, you've now gone Friday night, family, you guys going to the Bioscope, uh, Carlton Center, Eastgate Mall, you're gonna go watch the movie. Saturday, people are like, what did you do last night? Went to watch a movie, what is it? Turn in Hooch, great, wanna watch it with the kids? Don't. Oh, viral marketing campaign, mm. dead. Word of mouth, dead. So <laughs> <laughs> that's why I didn't do that well. Extrapolate yeah, that. Yeah. The remake, I don't wanna watch it. I, I'm not into it because you know, it's again, I'll watch something 80s. They're going to have a lot of dogs destroying stuff for their wet parts. So I'm, I'm not going to watch that part. There was a TV spinoff that they made. They went in, into production. They shot a few episodes. It never really, 
um, did quite well at all. Let me see yet. It was announced. No, this is the new one. Um, it's, uh, they did it as a TV series. They produced it. They did a pilot. Guess who was in the Tom Hanks role in the pilot? Biff Tannen. No idea. Biff Tannen from Back to the Future. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah, Biff Tannen. That's crazy. Biff Tannen. And of course, who wants to see Biff Tannen in the 80s? Who wants to see him as a good guy? He's a bad guy. You're Biff Tannen. You and your family ruined Marty McFly's life, so screw you. We're not interested in your movie and your TV show. The thing about the um, the sequel, that pilot, it kind of changed the ending of the movie because suddenly you got a hooch. He's not Turner and Frank. Yeah. Frank Furter or something, whatever they're going to call the dog. So... <laughs> <laughs> So that is the movie, Turner and Hooch. If you love dogs, you'll love this. But if you love dogs, you're going to hate it. Oh, but even if you don't love dogs. Oh, I see what you yeah, mean. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I see what you mean. I see what you, I see what you did there. Okay. See what right. I did there. Yeah. So it is a good romp, but just be warned. Don't watch it with your kids um, because it's it doesn't end well for for anybody. Because <laughs> you will traumatize them for life. Correct. Like I think we were. I think I actually think because you actually now blocked it out your mind because you couldn't remember that's how traumatic it was. No. You see. I couldn't remember the ending. No. But there's so many things from the 80s that traumatized me that I had to block out of my mind. Oh my. We have spoken about all of them on this show. We have. <laughs> oh my God. Like Robocop. I got some news about that later. We're going to go quickly into the very moist wham corner as moist as a French Mastiff's mouth. And then when we come out, <laughs> we're going to talk about Andrew Ridgely. <laughs> the Wham Corner has actually been dominated by Andrew Ridgely over the past few weeks. Big news, Andrew Ridgely, his girlfriend, okay? Um, it's now, you know, the first time we get mm. introduced to her, she's just called the longest legs in Belgravia, which, of course, you've got to be more than that. Um, now there's uh, been an yeah. interview with her. People got to get no Andrew Ridgely. Andrew Ridgely doesn't like to do interviews. She likes to talk. So let's talk about her. This headline, I'm more than a little in love. As a girl, I had a crush on Simon Le Bon, but now I'm dating Andrew Ridgely. Think about that. Having a crush on Andrew Ridgely. I mean, and Simon Le bon. how does that make Andrew Ridgely feel? And if he, if he was friends with Simon Le Bon, that is now over. <laughs> Well, I don't know because, I mean, Andrew Ridgely has the last – because, of course, everyone had a crush on George Michael. So this isn't new to him. It's like people always had a crush on I've done okay. I was with a banana rama. Yeah, but the girls didn't have much of a chance with with George Michael, so it was okay. No one knew then. Only Andrew <laughs> knew. Only Andrew and George knew. No one knew. You know, mm. they still have a crush. I mean, mm -hmm. he's done okay. He was with a banana rama. Now he's with a millionaire with the longest legs in Belgravia. <laughs> Uh, so this article talks about their love. She's. Um, they talk about their meeting. Uh, she, he, of course, when she met him, he's. And he, she didn't know who he was. She didn't know who he was when they she met. She didn't him. recognize him. She didn't recognize him at first because he's changed. I mean, he hasn't done the work. He's aged gracefully. Um, so she didn't recognize him. But yes. dead giveaway. He is wearing a beautiful patterned tuxedo. I was very interested in chatting. Mm. Of course, he is wearing a beautiful tuxedo. God. Um, and it just talks here yeah, about their, oh, there's a beautiful picture. They're doing a selfie, Andrew Ridgely doing a selfie with her. We'll post this up on that 80s I show. I mean, she is, I have to say, I, I said it last time, she's so pretty. Yeah, yeah. She really is. That's what I'm saying. So yeah. Simon Le Bon be damned. They're a, they're a gorgeous couple. They are. Yeah, they are. they're a gorgeous couple. Maybe now that he's like, you know, in a good space, emotionally, hey. maybe now he'll uh, agree to be interviewed by us. Yes, you know? yes. Because I think, I think we need to I think we shoot should, our shot. We should try. And at worst, we get her. And she can give us like some of the like, you know, tidbits about their relationship. I wouldn't mind that. I wouldn't mind talking to her in her <laughs> long legs. Because we're getting this article from a gossip rag. Of course, they have to talk about her body. By the time she was in her late teens, her impressive 30% torso, her, her body was made up of 30% torso, 70% leg. <laughs> who, measures, mm -hmm. who fucking measures that? That makes her sound like a freak, though. I mean, I it really does make her sound like some sort of freak. I know. Like, and, come uh, on. Oh, God damn it. Stupid rags. But anyway, moral of the story, Andrew Ridgely is happy and in love. I just want to finish off just so quickly because you did talk about gory scenes. Um, Robocop. Mm. It's super violent. We all know. Yes. Super violent. 35 years since the release. Um, just this week gone. They're talking about, do you remember the scene where they show the ED-209, that big 
villain, that Robocop, that other fucking police thing, police replacement they, thing. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Right, yeah, and they bring familiar. it into the boardroom and it shoots the shit out of the guy because they want to show it and he like breaks the directives. Do you remember that? And it just shoots him to pieces. Vaguely. Right. Vaguely. Oh, you you remember the scene? I need to watch it again. Yeah, and it shoots the guy out the window. It shoots him. He's in the, they know. Board yes, meeting, yes. Yes, yes, yes. They bring the thing in. It's like so terribly CGI'd. It's like it's coming like from Jason and the Golden Fleece, right? And they shoot the guy and they shoot him. Just shoot him. Just shoot him constantly. And then he, like he flies out the window and falls to his death from like the hundredth floor. And then everyone just carries on their board meeting. They just put their papers together. Okay, now next on the agenda, Bob. Okay, let's plug in the PowerPoint. It's, you know, like nothing happened. So they were supposed to initially shoot him with just um, – like blood squibs, you know, that they normally shoot. And they're like, Paul Verhoeven was like, no, fuck this. This is not violent enough. Get me as much spaghetti as you can find. And they just shot him with spaghetti to make it look like his body's being blown up. Same. Oh my God. We that's so watched clever, this. Actually. That's actually very <laughs> clever. We were children watching the story. I just want to explain it. Oh. You're never letting it go. Never. Never, Never letting it go. So this has been that 80 show. Just want to quickly say our dear friend Barrett, the celeb savant, uh, has shared with us, allowed us, will promote we're going to be on our podcast feed, his interviews with Hugh and Cry, uh, members of UB40 and Starship. Uh, he spent some time talking to them, mm. 80s based, 80s inspired. They are a lot of fun. And uh, he said generously, he said, Barrett, we need the content. And he's like, yeah, you can use these. And this is my labor of love. And so go take a listen. They will be in our feed, that 80 show essay. Just Google it. Did you Just, did you do that on purpose? Did you say labor of love on purpose? Because Hue and Cry, one of the big songs is labor of love. Of course I did. Because, yes, naturally. <laughs> because between you and I, I don't really know. Okay. Who you, I don't really know who you and Cry are. <laughs> I probably know this song. I probably know this song, but I don't know it's by them. But yes, that's what I did. I did that on purpose because I'm a raconteur. Right, of course. <laughs> well done. Because you do so much research for the show. Of course I do. Of course I do. Uh, so any anytime you want to go, That 80 Show, where can I find it? Just go That 80 Show. Just put it into Google and a version will appear to you in your face. And then you put it in your ears. And then Dorian, I will get three cents, which we won't, but it's nice to dream. And then Disney will buy us and make a remake of Turner and Hooch, except I'll be Hooch and I'll be a man. And no one will watch it but I, maybe I'll die. I don't know. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> from all the things we've spoken about today, wow. lesson of the week. Oh my God. <laughs> I, that I, I think you've lost your mind, actually, is the lesson of the week. Probably. But, um, hmm. Make me think. Of, I think the lesson of the week is, Paolo, I don't know what happened, but I'm glad that you've suddenly become a big ABBA fan. You're excited about ABBA. You never used to be. You used to just shut ABBA down. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, the lesson the lesson is actually your lesson, Paolo, to keep an open mind when it comes to Scandinavian superstars because oh. they will surprise you. Yes, what a lovely lesson. And I think with that, we will just play out. Thank you for joining me, Dory. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.